So I'm going to, I can't, I'm not tall enough to see down there, so I have to use the pointer up here. I hope it works all right. So I'm going to tell you a story today um, about a puzzle, uh, why paramecium pawn mutants cannot swim backwards. And in this talk, I'm going to review paramecium swimming behavior and how membrane potential controls direction of swimming in turns, its genetic dissection of swimming behavior by Ching Kung that identified the pawn mutants, the discovery of the voltage-gated calcium channel proteins in the ciliary proteomic analysis of the ciliary membrane, and the solution to the mystery of why pawn mutants do not reverse ciliary beating like the chess piece, and they do not move backward. Paramecium swimming behavior is dependent upon its excitable membrane. And in this panel, what you will see is a paramecium with its cilia beating toward the posterior, and that drives the cell forward. If you put an electrode into the cell, then you'll find that the membrane potential shown here is about minus 40 millivolts. So here's zero potential minus 40. If you do something to hyperpolarize the cell and make this more negative, where, oh dear, here we go, uh, then the cell will beat its cilia faster and the cell will move faster. And if you do something to depolarize the membrane potential, then the cell will slow down and if you depolarize it enough above threshold, you will shoot off a calcium action potential. The upstroke of the action potential is the opening of calcium channels in the cilia, and the repolarization is due to opening of potassium channels. When calcium comes into the cilia through those calcium channels, the cilia reverse their power stroke, and, and if you all were here for the last session, pictured Chad's wonderful imitation of power strokes, and now we're reversing it. I can't do it as well as Chad. <clears throat> but now we're reversing the ciliary power stroke so the cell swims backward. And while calcium remains high inside the cilium, it will continue to move backward. The important thing for you to know at this point <clears throat> is that the voltage-gated calcium channels of the action potential are exclusively in the cilia. Now, the genetic dissection of paramecium behavior was uh, identif uh, identified pawn mutants that cannot swim backward. Here are wild-type cells in a pool of barium chloride. Barium chloride strongly depolarizes the cells. And for each of these little lines, it's a long exposure micrograph, a cell moves, turns, moves, turns, moves, turns. And <clears throat> if you put an electrode in the cell in barium, you'll see a train of action potentials down here and for every action potential, there's a turn. Now, if you put pawn mutants into barium chloride, they will depolarize, that's shown here, but they will only swim in a straight line. In about 23 years after the discovery of, or publication of that paper, uh, Kung, by a tour de force, I, I cloned the, the pawn A gene by complementation. And so what you're being shown here is the uh, voltage clamp depolarization of a cell. If you do that to a pawn cell, you do not see any inward conductance. If you do that to a wild-type cell, whoops, I have to go back, sorry. If you do that to a wild-type cell, you see a nice inward conductance. And inward, actually, this is showing you a current. And if you do this to a pawn cell that has been transformed with a wild-type pawn gene, <clears throat> you, can now restore, you can now restore that current. It's the same thing with the pawn B gene, another tour de force of cloning. Again, if you, if you depolarize the cell, <clears throat> the wild-type has an inward calcium current. Pawn B has nothing. But pawn B transformed with a good pawn B gene <clears throat> shows you that inward current. So <clears throat> note that the injection of a gene for pawn A or B into the mutants will restore the wild-type phenotype, which means the calcium conductance and the backward swimming. The question, though, is do pawn genes code for and physically restore calcium channels? And the answer is no. 
the pawn genes for pawn A and B are too small and they cannot account for any of the components of a calcium channel. So here is a stylized calcium channel, and here is the very, very large alpha subunit. It's about 270 kD. These other colorful units around it affect activity. They're much smaller, and PON is not homologous to any of these. So do pawn mutants have non-functional channels in their cilia or perhaps no channels in their cilia? But to answer this question, we needed to identify the channels, the proteins themselves, that are specifically, as I told you before, exclusively limited to the cilia. And Junji Yano used phase separation and mass spectrometry to describe the proteome of the paramecium ciliary membrane he found three calcium channels, voltage-gated calcium channel subunits, the big ones, and he cloned these genes and ex expressed them. Uh, they're very large, and it, it is a challenge, but he could show that they are in the cilia and only in the cilia. So these three calcium channels uh, code for the ciliary calcium channels that are responsible for the action potential. And he showed that by RNAi for these three channels, RNAi reduces the backward swimming duration for um, a, a cell that's depolarized, as you would expect for these particular channels. So here is the evidence for that. Here you have the duration of backward swimming, and this is RNAi by feeding. So here is feeding the cells with an empty vector bacteria, and here is feeding them with RNAi for one, two, or the third channel, and it greatly reduces the duration of backward swimming. And if you combine them all, then you get very, very little backward swimming. And this is depolarization in 30 millimolar potassium. The next experiment answers the question, do pawn mutants have non-functional channels in their cilia or no calcium channels in their cilia? The and this is the answer, the calcium channels cannot be found in the cilia of pawn mutants until the mutants have been rescued with the wild-type gene. And this is a very nice demonstration of exactly that. So here are wild-type cells, pawn A cells, pawn B cells. With the wild-type cells, what we're showing you here is that the flag tag channel can be found in wild type cilia. It does migrate there, traffic there. So the control is in this lane. The cells are transformed only with the epitope tag flag. And then Junji will uh, immunoprecipitate flag from the ciliary membrane, and you find nothing. But when he transforms with flag tag channel and he immunoprecipitates, then you find this very nice channel, very large. This is about 270 kD. When he now turns to pawn A cells or B cells, then, and in each case, he's transformed with the flag tag channel. So they all have the opportunity to have a channel. In this case, this is the control. It's the flag tag channel and just an empty vector, and he cannot precipitate the channel from the cilia. But when he cures the cells, and maybe that's a strong word, when he brings in uh, and transforms with a wild-type version of the pawn A gene, so you not only have the channel, but you have the pawn A gene, then you can immunoprecipitate this channel from the cilia. And the same way with pawn B, the control shows you nothing, and when you doubly transform, then you can find the channel. And we get similar results for the other two channels, actually identical results for the other two channels. There's a behavioral corollary for this previous slide, and backward swimming is not restored in pawn cells unless they're injected and transformed. Um, it, sorry, they're, they, backward swimming is not restored if all you do is give them the channel, but if you also give them the wild-type pawn gene, then everything is restored. So here you see a lot of numbers, pawn A mutant, <clears throat> pawn B mutant. If you take a pawn A mutant and transform it with any of these three channels, but otherwise use an empty vector, 
for further transformation. You get absolutely no backward swimming. And when you transform with these three channels, and then you transform with the pawn mutant, uh, sorry, the pawn gene, you will get lots of backward swimming. Same with pawn B. You can transform with the channel, but you get no backward swimming. You transform with the pawn gene, then you get lots of backward swimming. And this is just to show you that the pawn B protein co precipitates with the calcium channel. So now the calcium channel is flag tagged, <coughs> pawn B is MIC tagged. So you IP MIC and you find lots of pawn, develop the same blot with anti flag and you find the channel. If you do the converse or the reciprocal uh, amino precipitation, precipitate with anti flag, you find the channel. Then probe again with anti-MIC, you find pawn. Now, what do the pawn proteins do? Pawn B protein appears to be involved, maybe in the physical interaction with the channel. At least it can be co-IP'd. And it probably is helping to traffic the pawn of the channel from the ER to the cilia. But we cannot find pawn B outside the ER. It's, that's the only place we find it in the cell. Pawn A, on the other hand, is found in the ER, the plasma membrane, and the cilia, but we cannot get it no matter how hard we try to co-IP with the channels. So we think right now, <clears throat> though the story's not done, that the pawn proteins seem to be helping in the trafficking of the channels into the ciliary compartment, and that is part of the answer to the puzzle why pawn uh, paramecia cannot back up. So thank you for your attention, and I'd be happy to answer questions. Are these uh, pawn proteins uh, conserved evolutionarily? N no, uh, think, no ho I'm hoping Genji's in the audience. <clears throat> I think only in tetrahymena. And second question is, I always wonder what exactly it means when there's a reversal of cilia rebeating at a single uh, <coughs> cilium level, all right? Mm -hmm. Is it that uh, the cilium finishes uh, recovery stroke and then it goes into an extra recovery stroke that is in, a, in the opposite direction? Or is it that it finishes the power stroke and then goes with the power stroke in the opposite direction? Or is it that it stalls in the middle and then does something, you know... <laughs> What is really, what okay. is exactly the reverse? I'm going to have to call on Chad to help with the demonstration. So there, there, it isn't, um, so the, when the cell is going through the change in power stroke, it isn't, it, let's see, <clears throat> there is, uh, especially when it goes back from uh, backward to uh, forward again, it goes through some transitions. Actually, for a while, it just beats like this. It, uh, perpendicular to the cell and then finally it starts beating in the correct direction again. But what I've seen and I, uh, I've just seen in uh, images of movies that the power, the power stroke reversal is quite abrupt. If you're asking me what happens at the axonemal level, I would need Peter Satir to help answer that question. We have, we have done so much mass spectrometry uh, with pawn A and pawn B, and we do not find them interacting with each other. Judy, are those calcium currents um, occurring oh. in the plasma membrane or the ciliary membrane or what? So you, the, I mean, you're measuring, you're measuring uh, the current mm -hmm. through the plasma membrane, right? So your electrode is, is into the cell, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the cell is isopotential, so as soon as you get a change in potential anywhere in the cell, the whole, you can measure it anywhere on the cell. But the channels that must open and cause the depolarization of the action potential are only in the cilia, so that's where all this starts. If you deciliate the cells and put your electrodes in, you can depolarize all you want, but you'll never see an action potential. And, and uh, do you have any thoughts on why you have th three channels there? Well, um, the perversion of paramecium is if one genome was good, three is better. Yeah. And so um, they're, par they're all paralogs. They're very close. 
And um, there are other uh, genes in the genome that are, are similar, but Junji's done a lot of work across many of these potential genes that could to eliminate them, and none of them affects backward swimming duration using RNAi. Thanks. We'll thank Judy for a nice talk.